Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to review the Sony WH-1000XM5 headphones. And we'll talk about why you might want them, and we'll debunk some myths that I think have built up over time. I hope you enjoy it. The Sony 1000 XM5s are the latest in a series, the fifth in a series, of wireless headphones that Sony has built. Uh, and I think they're aimed at the traditional listener on the go who cares about quality and who cares about features. In the US, their list price is about $400. Um, they run off of a Bluetooth signal, uh, generally. You, you can hook up a uh, cable to them. Uh, they have noise cancellation. They have adjustable frequency response. And uh, they're quite lightweight. Uh, it's a new design from Sony. Uh, and I thought they were, you know, pretty comfortable for a long period of time. And yet, there's just enough clamping force here. On, well, I'll put them on the right way. How about that? There's just enough clamping force that, you know, they don't really want to move around on your head. But I would not recommend them, uh, which is the case with a lot of headphones, frankly, as a, uh, you know, workout kind of headphone or, you know, if you really move around a lot, you know, bending over or dancing around the room or whatever you might do. Um, anyway, nicely done, nicely built, uh, contemporary style. There you go. There's, you know, not much more I can say about it. Okay, uh, next up we will talk about the reputation of these headphones and then try to establish how they really work. The Sony 1000 series, and particularly the 1000 XM5, but also really the XM4, which is a different driver design, so we're not talking about the same headphone, have built up quite a reputation over time. I'll put on screen uh, some quotes from numerous reviews that the headphones have received, and you'll, I think, see what I mean. Superlatives are the order of the day. Things like the best, or among the best, or uh, top of the line, or top shelf, or, you know, all sorts of quotes like that. So I just want to get this out of the way. I, I think that's complete balderdash. Uh, not that these aren't good headphones. I think these are uh, quite good headphones for the money if you want something that does what these do. That's a lot of caveats. You know, if we were talking about cars, if I picked out a really good uh, compact car, the Honda HRV, and said it's the best car in the world, I'd be written off immediately. But if I said the Honda HRV is the best uh, small sized economy car at a reasonable price point, I don't know, maybe there's a debate about that. I'm not an expert on compact cars, so uh, I'm, I'm not making that claim, but I think you get the idea. It's a conditional recommendation that usually isn't stated in the reviews that cover this particular headphone. Okay, let me go into a little bit of depth on why this is not the best headphone in the world under all circumstances. Besides the fact that there probably is no such thing as the best headphone in the world under all circumstances, uh, these headphones have a particular sound profile. I will go into depth on that in a minute. That particular sound profile is largely suited to application as a background listening kind of thing. You're at work, 
and uh, you work in an open plan office and you want to listen to music while you're working on spreadsheets or writing or producing code or whatever you do. And in those cases, you don't necessarily want the most exciting sound. You don't necessarily want the most dynamic sound. You want something that's smooth and kind of in the direction of easy to digest and not distracting. These might be a good choice under those circumstances. They have pretty good top to bottom frequency response, which I think may be why they get that accolades that they do. But that frequency response is pretty uneven as we go from, you know, 20 to 20 kilohertz. There are lots of ups and downs along the way that lead to, again, a particular uh, somewhat veiled and somewhat inaccurate sound character if you really want to get picky about it. The third thing, again, I'll go into this in more detail, is if you think about what this headphone was designed for and what it's really built for and where it really works, it's a Bluetooth headphone. And let me just put it out there. There's sort of no way that a Bluetooth headphone can be the best in the world because you've already massively handicapped it by the data rate of the musical signal that you can put into it. The musical data rate of Bluetooth is about 300k bits per second. There are higher data rate versions of Bluetooth, but they require uh, particular connections. And anyway, you're probably not going to get that in all reality, especially if you're using this the way I think they were intended, which is you run it off of Bluetooth on your phone, uh, which is a convenience. I, I grant you again, I, I, the application for these headphones is real and quite understandable. Let me compare just briefly so you know what I'm talking about. The data rate of Bluetooth is, a three, is about 300k BPS and Redbook CD, which is just a normal old-fashioned CD like you could have bought in 1987, is about 1.5 megabits per second. So it's about five times the data rate. And high res can go up to something like, again, the sky's the limit in a way, but six or eight megabits per second, which is gonna be 20 times the amount of data. Now, sound quality isn't linear with the amount of data, but you get uh, better resolution, better tone colors, better many things when you go up in that resolution level. So I'm not faulting Sony for the fact that it's a Bluetooth headphone. If that's what you want, okay, here you go. But it's not the best headphone in the world because the best headphone in the world is going to be able to operate at high res data rates and reproduce that high res very successfully. Okay, enough about other reviews. Uh, I'll come back in a minute and we can talk about what's actually quite good and enjoyable about the Sony 1000 XM5s. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions. We'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks. And now back to the show. All right. I said I would talk about what I liked about the Sony 1000 XM5s. And it's not about what I like. It's trying to explain to you the application for these headphones that I think works and where they perform well. So let me draw a distinction. You may or may not like this, but I think it really helps to just talk in broad terms about where these are positioned. Having listened to, you know, over a hundred headphones in my reviewing work, uh, I, I'm going to come up with a broad summary idea. There's a group of headphones that I think are aimed at a sound profile that I'm going to call warm and soft. 
These are in that category. Uh, as I said before, I think the warm and soft profile is one that can be enjoyed. If your primary listening mode is kind of as background music, you're doing something else, reading a book, uh, working on a computer, uh, commuting, whatever you might be doing. That warm and soft profile works very well there because it's not too dynamic, it's not too punchy, it doesn't surprise you or interrupt you, and it's, you know, it's warm and soft and quite enjoyable, you know, just like a comfy sweater. Okay, there are two other profiles, though, that I want to talk about, and I'll refer to these uh, in other reviews just to help you kind of position headphones in the landscape. The central one I want to talk about is what I'm going to call dynamic transparency. In my experience, the best headphones in the world, and they're often quite expensive, uh, the best headphones in the world are trying to have a high level of dynamics and a level of transparency that reveals something as close as possible to the original performance as recorded. That means they're going to have a very low noise floor. That means they're going to be able to resolve low-level detail. That means they're going to be able to deliver dynamics very strongly without distortion. That means they're not going to blur instruments together. Um, that means that the diaphragms aren't going to vibrate and get confused. And it often means they need significant amplification because the amplifier has to be able to follow the game as well. So that's the dynamic transparency profile. These are not, in my experience, in that category. The third category I'll talk about and refer to because there are a number of headphones designed around this idea is one I call mid-range focus. There are headphones that have a little bit of roll-off in the bass, a little bit of roll-off in the treble. They bring the focus into the mid-range and the manufacturer has concentrated on mid-range purity and mid-range accuracy. And that tends to be very important in reproducing music and if you were a designer, you might realistically say, hey, there are trade-offs in how I make these headphones, and I'd rather get the core band of the music right because it takes a lot of extra effort and it can sometimes get in the way to get the low frequencies and the high frequencies nailed and balanced out with the mid-range. Uh, and I don't have the budget to be able to do that, so I'm going to give you what you really need and not let this other stuff get in the way and distract you. So that's the mid-range focus kind of profile. We'll talk about more headphones that fit in that area. These do a pretty nice job as warm and soft headphones. Uh, I would say the there's... As I talked about before, there's good bass balance. Uh, the overall frequency response is relatively level. Um, and the bass, I think, is balanced in such a way that you won't be distracted by the fact that many people are accustomed to slightly elevated bass. Uh, and yet the bass, I don't think super gets in the way. They are noise canceling, which from a resolution standpoint would seem to be nice. Uh, I don't hear them as a highly resolving headphone, so the noise cancellation is really good if you're in a commuter situation or traveling a lot on airplanes where the, the exterior noise level is just very high and it would get in the way of the music, or you'd have to turn up the volume so high that you'd risk damaging your ears. So if you're using your headphones on airplanes or in mass transit or at uh, brew pubs, you know, noise cancellation is a thing. In the future, I'll cover some closed back headphones that try to do 
a uh, similar thing in a different way, but realistically noise cancellation is a thing if that's the environment you're in. So a nice warm and soft headphone that's got good frequency balance uh, and comes with noise cancellation so it works in the kind of environment where, as I said, you might be working or doing other things while you want to be listening to music. Sound quality. Well, you know, those of you who have watched our reviews know that we like to go into detail and we have a lot of descriptors to talk about this because um, it's a somewhat complex subject. But I do want to say that the these Sony headphones, and Sony makes many headphones and historically has made many very good headphones, um, have... Uh, nice, somewhat polite sound quality, but there, there's, um, if you really are picky, there's a lot to be desired here. Let me describe this in a few ways just to give you an idea. As I said, the bass is a little bit on the warm side, but the big problem is the bass isn't really very well defined. Uh, you don't get the sense that you're hearing a uh, plucked string on a bass guitar with uh, overtones coming through the way it would when you're actually listening to bass. It's not quite, you know, a turgid thud, but, you know, there's some lack of definition in the mid and upper bass that would really give you the sense of real instruments. Uh, the level might be a little too high if you're going to get picky about realism. I think a lot of people kind of like to aim in that direction. And honestly, with headphones, sometimes that's an advantage because you don't get the feeling of air hitting you from uh, actual bass being created in the room. So there's a, an argument to be made that the bass balance of these little guys is pretty good. Now, while I'm talking about balance, you should know that the uh, 1000XM5s have an equalizer uh, in the app, and you can do some tuning of the tonality of the headphones to suit your needs. I made a few adjustments, but I didn't really find that the frequency bands were narrow enough to really nail down what I would have liked to have done or to overcome some of the limitations here. But it's not a bad thing. And, you know, a tweak of 1 dB here and 1 dB there can make the difference between uh, I can't listen to these, which with the XM3s, I, I, I just never could make them work. Uh, with these, a little tweak here and a little tweak there really... Uh, help me to get to a point of, I can really see this. This could, this could work under the right conditions, but you're not going to be able to solve all the problems of driver design and Bluetooth limitations using the equalizer settings. The mid-range has a kind of hooded sound. Again, I think this is due to, you've got frequency response deviations in each band, and so to my mind, the somewhere in the upper mid-range, it feels like there's a little bit of roll-off and uh, voices and some uh, mid-range instruments like piano sound a little bit more like this than they do like this. And, you know, it's not tragic. It's probably not going to annoy some of you, but relative to the best headphones on offer. Uh, yeah, it, they're, they're not at that level. The treble can sound a little bit splattery. I don't know that that's the headphone. Uh, we're talking about Bluetooth here, and uh, 
Bluetooth throws away a lot of data that's in the original musical signal, and that's purportedly done using algorithms that know what you care about and don't care about. Uh, but anyway, the high frequency sounds are can be a little bit hashy and uh, not bright, just they don't have the smoothness and the detail that you would hear on, say, uh, real cymbal strike or uh, violin tones. They can just get a little fuzzy might be another word to use. Okay, uh, it's a $400 headphone and I'm kind of being hard on them, uh, but that's really not my intent. I think you could enjoy these. They're well balanced. Uh, they fit their application well. And I think uh, that's the application that a lot of people have. So in a way, I understand the praise if people would just be honest and say four four $400 among noise canceling headphones that rely on Bluetooth. That's a lot of caveats though. Okay, so... Uh, I've got these as reference headphones. I'll come back and talk about other headphones that compete with these at uh, various price points. But I want to finish up with the mention of another Sony headphone that is significantly cheaper than these, is not Bluetooth based, and I think in some ways for some listeners outperforms them. So I'll be back in a second to talk about that if you're interested in how to save $300. Just for a little more context, people like comparisons, I like comparisons. Just to put the Sony 1000XM5s in a little bit of context uh, and using a little bit of poetic license, I'm going to talk about another Sony headphone. These are the MDR7506s. As you can see, it's a wired headphone. They're Right now on Amazon, they're $80 in the U.S. Uh, I, I don't know global pricing, but I think they're going to be in the $100 realm or $100 equivalent realm in a lot of places. This is more of a mid-range focus kind of headphone. I'm not saying it's absolutely phenomenal, although for $80, bucks you tend to get a pass on a lot of things. But what you get with this is if you have a source, if you're listing on a desktop and you have a reasonable rig for playing high resolution files or even red book files, I mean, heck, you could have a, I know this is super old school, but you could have a CD player with a headphone jack and you'd get five times the data rate that you get in a Bluetooth headphone. Anyway, you can hear pretty much instantly the difference in clarity, the difference in transparency, the difference in mid-range and high-frequency detail that you get. And remember, these are round numbers, $300 cheaper than the 1000XM5s. Uh, so I just want to point out, if you're trying to save money, and if you don't need Bluetooth, uh, there are other choices that can, I think, at least compete for musical satisfaction with a product like the 1000XM, XM5s. Uh, we will also be talking over the next months about other headphones that are kind of in this category, meaning wired, uh, but at various price points from here. 80 or $100 on up. And we're going to do that because if you really care about sound quality, and that's kind of our MO, if you really care about sound quality, the setback that you take from using Bluetooth is just so severe that we feel the obligation to make people aware of what's available to run a higher res signal. Uh, but let me finish. On the other hand, if your application is highly mobile, you want to run off of a phone, you don't want any other equipment, 
uh, involved, the 1000 XM5s do a pretty good job in that space. We'll research whether there's a better answer. I'm not 100% sure that there is at that price point. At a higher price point, I think there may well be. And in a couple of weeks, I'll be back with one candidate in that space. So the Sony WH-1000XM5 is really a very good headphone for what it's trying to be. It's just not trying to be an audiophile headphone in our lexicon. And I want to put that out there so those of you who uh, read other publications, how dare you, uh, but those of you who read other publications uh, aren't confused by what it is and what it's trying to be. It does a very good job of what it tries to do, uh, but that's not being an audiophile headphone. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's helped. Uh, and as always, we would love it if you would subscribe, click on the notification bell. Uh, also, we have a free newsletter that covers lots of additional audio products. Of course, you can subscribe to the magazine. We've got you covered in many different ways. And as I said, we'd love to have you on board. Thanks. Thanks.